Welcome everyone to this live radio variety show coming from this cosmic radio receptors of KCIW LP 100.7 FM located in today's lovely, lovely sunny coastal Brookings in Oregon. My name is Dr. Gigi and you are tuned into this week's edition of Doc and Jacques. My co-host is usually Jacques Wolf Kepner, but today he's not in the building. Sniff. He is still in Missouri. <clears throat> I know he's listening and would love to be here. So, hi, Jackie. He'll be next. He will be back next week. Weehoo. My son, Lucas, is here instead, sitting across from me. Lucas, how are ya? I'm fine, Mom. <clears throat> As you know, we will start each week's show with a segment full of interesting topics that we call MD10. And after the interesting medical tidbits, I will introduce this week's guests. For a, to quote Jackie, creatively, composed, colorfully, cosmopolitan, consequentially, cordial, charming conversation with coastal community celebrities. Jeez, that's a mouthful. Okay, I made it through. We try to top off the tour with a fun time corner filled with quotes and possibly some jokes. With my, which might not work out today without the chief jokester, Jackie Wolf Kepner, but Lucas will try. Before we get into this MD10 for today, I've got some shout outs for our, to our listeners. To Jackie, my sweetheart, who is still in Missouri. Hey, Jackie. Chris and Dr. Sherry, where we stayed for several days in Missouri. And boy, howdy, did we have fun. It was cool. We discussed many shows there, KCRW, Doc and Shock shows. They were very interested. They listened to just about all the shows. We also met Rebecca and saw Brian, Hoppy, Darwin, Uta, and Pearl. And a shout out also to our homies here, Jared, Jaden, Dave, Victoria, Rochelle, Janice, Thank you all for lending us your support. Um, last but least, but not least, I really want to say how beautiful Missouri is. It is super nice with its mansions, proud home ownership, immaculate lawns, super, 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 super friendly people. It was amazing over there. So if you're bored, go to Missouri, but not maybe in June. All right, let's start with the MD-10. Today, we're going to talk about phobias. Last time it was manias. Today, it's phobia. Phobias are extreme or irrational fears of or an aversion to something and is considered a mental illness. Yeah, sad. Typical symptoms of phobias can include nausea, trembling, rapid heartbeat, feeling of un <laughs> unreality, and being preoccupied with the fear object. Cause for phobias are unknown, believe it or not, but it is thought to be partly genetic and or learned behavior. Like you see your mom freaking out when she sees a cat, and then you kind of, you learn that behavior as well. Or induced by a traumatic experience if you get bitten by a dog. And then from that time on, you have PTSD against the dog, maybe. More than 10% of the U.S. population will deal with a phobia in their lifetimes. The good thing is it doesn't actually have to last forever. It can last for a week, a year, 10 years, but it can go away. Women are more likely to experience phobias. Well, so be it. The treatment includes therapy and medication. Therapy are basically, um, well, they're called exposure-based treatments or cognitive behavioral therapy. Either way, it is to come to grips with why are you afraid of whatever you're afraid of. Exposure is where they uh, make you deal with your phobia by having you deal with it directly in a controlled environment, right? Yep. Good now. I mean, exactly. This is my son, and I speak German to him, so it's kind of hard for me to switch to English when I talk to him. So, yes, so exposure therapy is you're starting maybe with just a picture or just a thought of the cat that you have a phobia against. And then you might introduce a picture, and maybe a couple of sessions later, you actually see 
a cat in the window, and you learn how to deal with the cat and not freaking out. The cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, is done with a counselor, and they will try to rationalize out with you, why do you have this phobia? Look at this poor little kitty. It doesn't do anything. And so once the person realizes the kitty really doesn't do anything, hopefully it doesn't, they can master the, the feelings and maybe, you know, go to the other road of the side of the road if, before they get the phobia feelings and getting all stressed out. Medications are actually not against the phobias, they're against the symptoms or for the symptoms that you might get. So if you have a, heart, a rapid heartbeat, you give a beta blocker, for example, or if you have thoughts of doom, you get an antidepressant. So that's usually what is given, an SSRI, a serotonin reuptake inhibitor, beta blocker, and some anti-anxiety. So it's, a, it's actually a heavy-duty mental illness. There, that's the medical part, but let's talk about some phobias. So we all know the arachnophobia, and after the movie, a lot more people had phobias against spiders because it was pretty... Have you guys watched it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was kind of scary. Um, so if you haven't had arachnophobia before, after the movie, very likely. Or the nomophobia. You guys know what that is? No. Nomophobia is a phobia that was coined in 2018, I think. It is the phobia to be without your... The, the anxiety you have if you're without your phone. No more phone. Nomophobia. It's a real... <laughs> <laughs> it's a real I think my kids have that. <laughs> yeah. I think everyone gets that if you're navigating and your phone turns <laughs> off. Very true. <laughs> Okay, so here are two phobias that sound almost the same. Lucas, astrophobia and astrophobia. Do you know the difference? I don't think I do. They have a similar root, sounds like. Yeah, astro. <laughs> astrophobia is the fear of thunder and lightning. Your dog has this one. <laughs> astrophobia, fear of outer space. You should watch the movie Gravity if you don't have that one. Now, here's another one, cacophobia. So that is the fear of ugliness. <laughs> yeah, but as in ugly, as in discordant tones, like in cacophony. Not funny. Cacophony. That was funny. We all know claustrophobia. I have patients who can't get into the MRI because it's too empty, too tight in spaces, so they get all anxious. Now, here is one that is a super long word. <clears throat> Hippo, I tried to practice and I can't. Hippopotamonstrosequipedaliophobia. <laughs> can you do, can you repeat that, please? <laughs> Not really. Hippopotamonstrosequipedaliophobia. Okay, what is that? It is the fear of long words. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had some fun with that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they worked on that to make it really, really long. I've got one. What? Have you ever heard of triskaidekaphobia? Mm, you guys? No. no. So if you know Greek, you would know that it's the fear of the number 13. Well, duh. <laughs> so you'll actually know, if you ever go around like to Las Vegas or places that are rather superstitious, maybe not even that, they won't have a 13th floor. Yeah, to skip hotels. right over it. So, right. So we have that in this in the states. We have the fear of having a thirteenth floor in hotels. So it goes from twelve to fourteen. Skip, skips right over it. However, in uh, East Asia, like Korea and Ch uh, China and Japan, they're afraid of the number four, so they won't have a fourth floor. And sometimes they'll skip even like the uh, forty floor. So we go from like thirty nine to fifty. They're afraid oh, of the number oh, four. The is <laughs> tetraphobia. Yeah. Dang. Something to cool. do with the way that it uh, sounds similar to certain words. Interesting. There's actually another one from East Asia. It's uh, known as fan death. In, a Kore in Korea, they had this superstition where they believed a fan could cause you to die. At night when you're sleeping. Yeah, they thought that maybe when you're asleep with the fan on, maybe you'd steal your breath or 
maybe make you too cold. So for many years in Korea, you would uh, when you would buy a fan there, they would have a timer on it. So interesting. Very specific. Yep, cultural, cultural phobia. And there's other generic ones. I, I kind of have a uh, typophobia. Tripo. Tripophobia. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Because I also have dyslexia. So be careful when you Google this. It's the fear of small holes. <laughs> kind of doesn't make sense yeah. when you see it. I think the idea is that, I don't know, it looks like infested, but it's not fun to see something. There's all these little holes in it. Like think about maggots and flesh or something gross. All right. Let's don't think about maggots and flesh. Yeah, it'll make me vomit. All right, sure. bad. <laughs> well, I've got such a weak stomach. <laughs> like, okay, we're not talking about it. <laughs> well, let's go get to our guests. Thank you, everybody, for the MD10, Dr. Lucas. Now, today we have two incredibly talented guests joining us. Two women who are blazing their own trail in the music industry. Lacey and Yana are not just gifted musicians, but they are also accomplished songwriters who compose and perform their own original material pretty much all the time. Jackie and I went to their recent live show at the brewery where these two gals captivated the audience for a staggering three plus hours with an extensive repertoire of their self-written songs in their group called Rogue Strings. In an industry often dominated by male voices, Lacey and Yana are shining examples of women who are taking control of their artistic destinies, writing their own narratives, and leaving a mark on the music scene. They fit perfectly into our show, which, as we know, has the subtitle, Ladies First. I want you to join me as we welcome these two remarkable women to the show and delve into their journeys as musicians or songwriters, mothers, and multifaceted individuals. Welcome, Lacey Young and Oops, Lacey and Yana. <laughs> Thanks for having us. I'm excited to be here today. Thank you. I'm a little nervous. Yeah, no, don't be. We got over the tripophobia. <laughs> as long as it's not spiders. <laughs> Can't get and that's the first one. <laughs> All right, we'll just go back and forth. Here, Lacey sits next to me. Lacey, where are you from? I am from here, from Gold Beach. Uh -huh. um, I moved around a little bit as a kid, but we came back when I was about uh, 11 and then just have been in Gold Beach ever since. Ooh. So you you traveled down from Gold Beach to um, Brookings today. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. Yana, how about you? I am originally from this little country called Bulgaria. Yeah. Yeah. I came and go beach with my work visa in 2007, and I've lived there. And I worked the same job since then as well. I had to learn how to drive, which was scary. <laughs> you didn't only drive in Bulgaria? Oh, God, no. I was 30 when I learned how to drive. <laughs> you all are safe now. But... <laughs> wow, nice. So yeah. you know Bulgarian? Uh, yeah. I was born and raised. I came along with one suitcase. I didn't know anybody. I... You said you came as a 30-year-old? No, I that's was, when she learned how to drive. Oh, she learned how to drive. I learned how to drive later in my life, which all people that live here already known that for a while. <laughs> so it was very much anxiety level for me. Yeah. Probably a phobia of some sort because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Drivophobia. <laughs> <laughs> so you both have since been in Gold Beach? Yes. Yeah, I ended up marrying her seventh cousin. <laughs> so that's who we know married, each other. Yeah, she married my cousin. <laughs> And that's how you got to know each other? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. how we know each other. Oh, wow. So, well, that goes into my next question. How did you two meet and decide to form Rogue Strings? Uh, well, we had known each other for a while, and um, I started writing music. We didn't start originally together. I started on my own before I could even play the guitar and before I could sing and I was going to say, that's a fear, too, is singing in front of people. <laughs> I've had that. I don't know what it's called, but that's definite fear. Uh, and anyway, so I started, when I started finally trying to play and stuff, I would, uh, show my aunt, my, um, her ex's, uh, mom, the music. And she kept telling me, Yana, Yana used to be in a band in Bulgaria. You guys should get together. You guys should get together. And I was too nervous to do it. And then one, um, one Super Bowl, we, I had a song that I've been working on and my uncle was in town from Alaska. And so I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to sing it. And they, her and him were out there with me and I played it. And then. 
uh, she said she wanted to work with me. And so we've been working together ever since. So when was that? How long ago? I was like 2018 or so. Yeah. Okay, six years ago. Yeah, about six years. Yeah. Uh, wow, nice. She was learning how to play, but I didn't know how to play guitar. Right. She kept telling me, I, I can't play, I can't play. And I was like, yes, you can. Yes. She says, no, my fingers are too tiny. My hands are too tiny. <laughs> Midget hands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so uh, we played a song at the fair, and I played, and she just stood there, and with her hands in her pockets, she decided she didn't like that very much. And so I gave her one of my guitars and sent her home with it. She called it old Betty. I call, Yeah. <laughs> so what did you what did you do in the band that you were before? I was always a singer. I actually oh. grew up. I can't believe my dad let me do that at fourteen. But I had a band <laughs> in Bulgaria which played like covers, and I went to school and I worked at nights. I made my own money as a singer. Oh wow! But back in the day, I was like cassette players and things, so I didn't know English. So I was like, I would just rewind the cassettes and try to figure out what Mariah Carey sang in that song. But you know. I don't think I got all the words right back then, but now my English has like gotten to the level that I'm happy with. <laughs> back in the day, though, it was very different. Well, when I in when I, I'm from Germany, so when I was still in Germany, my friend and I, Kati, and I tried to find the lyrics for um, "Father and Son" by Cat Stevens. May, uh, may Me, maybe older, but um, <laughs> we went back and forth, back and forth because there was no Google, there no, was no nothing. Was you nothing. just went back with the cassette, and then Correct. what did he say? Well, that doesn't make any sense. Because we just, you know, had high school English, so. Yep. Funny. So you did not know to play the guitar when no, you... No, no, actually, no. Old Betty taught me how to play. <laughs> and since that fair event, was it November, I wrote my first song. Mm -hmm. And from then it was rolling. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. It started rolling. I had all this bottled up inspiration. <laughs> she was needing an outlet. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's been, I grew up in a musical family. My dad and my mom always played guitars and stuff, and I told them I've never played an instrument. <laughs> Ever since the lady from the piano lesson told me I cannot play an instrument, I was like, this is not, a, I'm just going to sing, it's fine. So anyway, Lacey was my inspiration to pick up the guitar, and we started writing together, we would help each other. Yeah. And it's been a process. It has been such a process because... I'm such a word person and she's such a melody person that when we started working together, she'd be like, this is too wordy. I'm like, no, I want all the words. And so now like we'd be like a little <laughs> battle kind of back and forth. And now we're. We work really well together. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like it. Now. So do you, Lacey, do you play another instrument or? Is... No, I don't. I just got a bass though. So I'm going to try to learn some of that. <laughs> And we have, well, we have harmonica. She plays the harmonica. I play harmonica. Oh, cool. And yeah. you play that leg thingy. I call it the foot tambor, a tam foot dangle. <laughs> <laughs> foot tambourine, actually. Very nice. All yeah. right. So you're self-taught then? Um, yeah. Or do you, do either of you have any classical training? You said you were a singer? No. Nope. So just self-taught. Mm -hmm. All right. Very nice. Everything self-taught. Now, walk us through, you kind of said a little bit wordy and melody-ish. Walk us through the process of a typical, if there is such a thing, a songwriting process from initial idea to finishing song? Uh, well, for me, it usually starts with uh, with words, like with just an idea. Some Something will spark something. And I always have been like really drawn to poetry. And so when I start thinking of anything, it kind of goes in rhymes. And, and then the melody comes, well, I, I don't know, it kind of comes together, but it's hard because... Like we don't know keys, <laughs> we know the idea of it, but like right. when I when I'm playing around on a on the guitar trying to figure out what sounds best for the idea that I've got, I just have to keep messing around with it because I can't be like, oh, this is an A sharp, or I want this to be an F minor. I have to just kind of go around and figure out what tones sound good. So you you work together in making a song, or come you do you come up with a melody or or with the words, and then Yana goes and puts some. It's both. It's both. Yeah, we we write individually and then, and then we write oh, together. Wow. And then sometimes we're like, okay, this is the idea, but we want to, if you hear something better, if you think something better, then let me know. And uh, some she'll say stuff like, so, she'll write things, but she'll be like, I know you can, you'll say that we can find a better way to say it. Because I say that to she her all the time. All the time. <laughs> like, I have this idea. And I say the words and I blubber something and she's like, we can say it better. <laughs> well, okay, I'll give you I'll give you an example yeah. because I think about about it often. Uh we were writing the Greyhound song and she was like, I wanna say something like bite me in the the butt. Can I say that? Yeah. Okay. And I was like, Well, like 
let's think about something else. So instead of doing that, the line is, uh, I took my ring off and threw it in the dirt because that is all your love is worth. So, oh, wow, that is, wait, who came up with that? No, that's way more poetic than... The she po- did. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's way more <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm the melodic go writer, but, you know. I do I do come up with some lines myself sometimes that I'd like to take some credit for. I don't know. I think the biting had some kinematic <laughs> to it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, although I have heard many of your songs and I see that there's a common denominator in there, do you have, do you usually sing about a certain thing or are you open to any other subjects or do you think a lot about, you know, Drinking something and <laughs> losing somebody else. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely open to what, you know, whatever, whatever the universe wants us to create. Cool, yeah. Definitely what we want to work on. It's just a lot of the times when we're playing out, we're playing at bar settings yeah, or something. And so um, we do pick the more drinking, uh, okay. fun, upbeat songs because we do have a lot of like sadder songs and stuff. We started with more sadder songs mm-hmm. and funny songs, and now I was like, Lacey, we need to pick up, we need to pick up the, the pace. This is not all good They're work. usually funny songs. Well, we wrote a lot of funny songs after that. <laughs> after the first year that we had, the first time we had a show in Mr. Ed's, we made some ladies cry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, we should make them dance. Yeah, they're like, we weren't expecting that. It's so beautiful. Do you usually have some personal experiences where you draw from or is it just something that pops into your mind for me a lot of it's personal experiences and also Mm -hmm. listening to other people's stories um sometimes i find it easier to write from a perspective of watching somebody else um so yeah do you have do you take inspiration also from other singers and or guitar players or you know do do you have a favorite band where you I love Taylor Swift. <laughs> doesn't. You're She's Swift amazing. <laughs> I am. I'm like, I love her so much. I watch her all the time. She's an addict. I am. <laughs> She's a lyrical genius, and I can't get enough of her. She's great. Wow. I don't like to play favors myself, but <clears throat> I had a How'd date. I had a date with my dream with Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Not in my genre at all. <laughs> <laughs> but you go to his music to get inspired. No, no, he's just. Just, she just thinks he's cute. I, <laughs> <laughs> for inspiration, though, I guess some country artists like Miranda Lambert would be. And um, I, I did see Carrie Underwood, and I like cried and laughed, and I was like, "Oh my god, I want to be like her so bad." Oh, she's amazing, like that powerful voice. Well, sometimes your inspirations aren't in the same genre, you know. They're not right. Sometimes they're just people walking around or leaving your life, which well, you know, based a lot of songs on that. Yeah, well, then the toxic people, they're no longer around. So what do you listen to when you're not getting inspired just to mm-hmm. hang out? <laughs> uh, Walker Wheeler Jr. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. He's you don't want to listen to that. No, he's, he's, he's awesome, but he's a uh, pretty... <laughs> that oh. was a joke. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't like know. to listen to Latino, actually. Okay. I like to dance to Latino music. Now, does Bulgaria have their little folk music, or is it Yeah, more they English? do. They do call it a folk music. It's not the bestest thing you can listen to. <laughs> it's not inspired. There, it's all the same. It's like, it's like worse than the Latino music would be. It's like all the same rhythms and these girls with fake everything and oh yeah, the same rhythms and the same words. And see, that's what I think from techno. Tech Germany is, I bet, I guess, known for techno music. It's always, I don't know, I don't like forever, it. forever the same beat, right? Yeah. Okay. It's all mis- It's all wasted on you. Well, once when you're like, they just, it's a brainwashing at one point, I guess. You're just going to keep dancing. Yeah, it's an accessory to the rave. <laughs> Never been to one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what it is, so hey. So we watched you play several times, actually, and it seemed like you just had fun. You just played, you talked during the... You know, you go back and forth with uh, during the song, talking to each other in the song. That's part of the song, and just having fun together. So, is that how it is? Do you study that so it seems like it is, or is that how you play? I mean, it seems so genuine. <laughs> it it is. It it really. We don't like. It is how we play. It's yeah. How yeah. It's it's very natural. It's very comfortable, and that's kind of like what we want 
for the audience or the listeners. We want them to feel the same way, just feel comfortable, feel yeah. at home, yeah. feel at peace. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's just easy. It does come natural. Mm-hmm. And yeah. sometimes with my Bulgarian slash accent, she would say, if you don't understand what she's saying, raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, because like, I'll translate for her. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I can understand that. See? Well, when I sing, the accent doesn't come out. But when I talk, it's a completely different story. So. <clears throat> it happens, but it's just fun of it sometimes. Well, see, some people also tell me, hey, where are you from? You have an accent. It's like, what? How rude. No. <laughs> you don't want to be known to have an accent. <laughs> Only if you care. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. We've been accused of having Yankee accents when my mom <laughs> lived in Louisiana for a while, which is weird because I'm from Utah. Right. <laughs> I've been accused to be from Boston. Boston. <laughs> Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Tell each of you, tell us a most memorable something or other that happened in any of your performances that you, it's either the craziest, the funnest, the cutest, what happened during one of your performances. Uh Uh-oh. I wasn't prepared for that. I was not prepared for that. (laughs) I guess once I forgot a whole song that I wrote. (laughs) Yeah, she was looking at me like a deer in the headlights, and I was just like... Okay, we're going to sing another song. <laughs> Skip, scratch that. <laughs> hey, you guys don't have notes or nothing, right? You uh-uh. just and know all the words yeah, and you're the always... Books, but when you start strumming something and it just ev- evaporates from your head, <laughs> like, like, and I stood there and I was like, I can't, I don't, I don't have it. <laughs> yeah, you never have, yeah, you might have the book somewhere, but you, when you sing and then you go up with the way and then you stop and you do the perfunctory something or other I mean it's always in unison that you can do that and then you go a half note up and down I mean little teeny tiny yeah. changes in the song and you all do it together so that's really cool I guess I'd like to say one more thing about remember the um, little girl what was her name they came on the stage to sing with us with her oh, parents yeah. permission which we have this one song that we're not going to sing today <laughs> yeah. yeah but she wanted to come up and sing she's one of our biggest fans yeah Aww. that was really sweet she came prepared i told her be ready next time we go it was in winchester bay at the blue box okay. oh it's not even a relative it's just no a as the girl that fell in love with her music and her parents allowed her to so she's like eight <laughs> yeah she's so sweet she like made us christmas cards and stuff <gasps> and sweet. is she where's she at not gold beach no, no uh winchester bay she lives two and a half hours north oh my god one of the venues that we play there oh this great She's mm-hmm. great. She would always come. She write us cards. We wrote her Christmas cards. She got it the same. Like, she got it. She teared up. Her grandma said, "Aww, amazing." Sweet. So I guess that was one of my favorite mm-hmm. moments. What's her name? What was it, Matt? Ma- and so, yeah. Uh, Hi, I'm girl. really Hi, bad girl. with names. <laughs> uh, with names, I'm just terrible. You introduce yourself. You turn around. I was like, "Wow, what's her name?" <laughs> <laughs> Lacey. So, okay, this is before we started performing. Um, we were going up to Mr. Ed's, and I thought that we were going to be singing, like, rotating with a bunch of mus- <laughs> other musicians, because this was going to be, like, the first time that I'd ever sang or played in front of people, and I was scared. And uh, halfway up there, she was like, oh, uh, by the way, by the way. it's just going to be the two of us <laughs> for two hours. And I was like, I was like, can the world just open up and swallow me whole right now? Because oh, I yeah, got oh, I, yeah, alert. Yes. I was just like, <laughs> good thing they have beer there. Oh, my gosh. Yep. It was so scary. And uh, we walk in and I was like terrified. I couldn't think. And this guy goes, hey, you guys are going to play? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, well, if you guys go play a song right now, I'll put you on my Instagram. And I'm like, I don't think we're supposed to start till seven. And he was just like, OK. And then he left. It was Rick from Pawn Stars. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, because he lives in Curry County. Really? Part time. Yeah, and it was him. And I didn't recognize him because I was so scared. <gasps> and so, like, that was funny. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So did you catch up with him afterwards? <laughs> no. Yeah, oh, I missed so that, too. <laughs> One of these days, though, if I run into him, I'm going to tell him that story <laughs> because I still cannot believe it. I'm like, oh, my gosh. That's funny. Well, guess what? We are at the mid-break already. Dang. So we're halfway through this week's edition of Doc and Not Jock. You're tuned into KCIW 100.7 FM in Brookings, Oregon. We're proudly a non-commercial community radio station. Regardless if you sing, you have a voice. 
We are made up of local, good folks, just like you, who care passionately about this lovely coastal village. If you have a penchant for community service or volunteering and are joining the KCIW radio family, get involved. You can serve, contribute, contribute, donate your time and money to an exemplary local nonprofit radio station. You can find out more on our website, kcaw.org. Do it now or later. After this. Do it. Do it. Do it. You know you want to. <laughs> Everybody's got a manly voice. <laughs> <laughs> I know a squeaky one won't sound very good. <laughs> All right. Um, what? Tell us what was your experience? How's been your experience being a woman in the music industry? You know, ladies first type things. What were challenges that you guys have faced? Were there any? Well, we haven't like been out on to like large stages or anything. So or we so we haven't had to have face any like. Uh, challenges really in the music music industry yeah as far as I'm concerned I don't believe um, my biggest challenge has just been facing my own fear and getting in front of people and just pushing through that um, that's just been my biggest challenge so far what do you think Yona my biggest challenge was those spiders in that one venue we were at Grants Pass one day there they, were spiders they had black <laughs> widows <laughs> oh, oh yeah it was scary we thought they were gonna wind up in our equipment <laughs> <laughs> um, no, technically though, like like I said, I'm just so new to playing instruments all together. So sometimes, you know, I don't know if I can make it the three hours that we have to play, but we always do. Yeah, I think that we'll like we we'll start, start and we'll start stuff. facing more challenges as soon as we can get our recordings done and finalized, because then we'll start actually trying to get them into like the hands of producers and yeah and things like that. So you have some th- somebody working on it. Are you guys working on that? We started on it, and then last summer we were booking so many gigs and running around, um, and we both work mm-hmm. and got kids and stuff. So uh, everything got put on hold, and uh, life has just been kind of in the way. And we are. I'm going to be leaving for Alaska on Saturday, oh, and wait. coming back. And when we co- when I come back, we're going to start working on the recordings again. So hopefully we'll have something soon. We have a little studio set up in her yep. house so we can record at our convenience, but it hasn't been very convenient. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, summertime. Yeah. Too busy with music to do music. <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of. It's a good way to put it. Well, on your um, concert thing at, at the brewery, you had merch, merchandise. Yes. So you're yep. starting to... Pushed into that. Yeah, we've got some tank tops and shot glasses, and we're going to get some koozies and uh, stickers. And we'll get them out. Who, who came up with that idea? That's great. Well, we both wanted to, but uh, she came up with the logo. I designed the she designed logo it. by now. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be real fancy if we just keep putting different logos. Yeah. Like some of the big bands, you know? <laughs> you never know what kind of logo we're going to throw in. <laughs> when the groupies come up. Dancing with their T-shirts. No, you had more than just tank tops. You had something else, too, right? Like hats or something? No? no. At the moment, we only had the tank tops printed because we didn't get the T-shirts down. I was mm-hmm. so close, and then I couldn't make a deal with the T-shirt company, and, was, and then we dropped it. Oh. Well, merchandising seems to be the best way for independent artists these days to be making their money, you know? We've heard. Yeah. Yep, yep. Now, do you offer it to uh, in other stores as well, or is it... Is it when you perform only. Right now, it's just when we perform. Yeah. Is that what you're gearing toward? Or is it more, Do you ha- will you have your own Rogue Strings outlet or order online? Think, yeah, w- I eventually would yeah. like to have something like that. We just haven't gotten there yet. Right. I mean, you have more than a lot of people have, so that's yeah. pretty cool. Thank you. So how do you fund all this? You have a little studio in your house. How, how is that funded? Uh, with the money that we make when we perform. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So we we so there's your self sufficient um, hobby. We're good savers. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, actually, <laughs> we've we've definitely put in a little bit of our own money. Um, yeah. But but yeah, we try to save the money from the gigs that we 
play at unless we need to do some like gas or whatever to compensate. Yeah. I have actually prematurely, I have to have a quote right now, even though it should be later from Chris Nelson in Missouri, who says you can retire when your hobbies pay off. There you go. You're <laughs> self-sufficient. <laughs> uh -huh. You already got started. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty Woo! awesome. <laughs> when? <laughs> I'm kidding. Lucas? No. Okay. Um, what advice would you give to aspiring young female songwriters or performers? What have you learned and which hurdles can you can take away for other women? Do you want to go first? I mean, I guess it's just never think you can't do it. Yeah. Just don't. That's not an option. If you think you can't do it, don't even start. I can't believe you never played the piano. You play, I mean, you play, I'm not a, I mean, a uh, guitar. I, I'm not a guitar player, but you seem like you're playing the same amount, right? And same mm -hmm. hands and everything. So I drag a piano at my house right now. <laughs> I mean, I wrote a couple of songs on it. Yeah. Just learning. But yeah, so every young lady out there that it has an idea or so, just write it down. And it's so easy to learn how to play an instrument. There's so many online courses right now. Yeah. I said I've seen my dad play, but I only started with two chords. You just need to start with something. Yeah. And then just follow. And when your fingers get stronger, you probably put more and more and then just make your brain lead the way, the way, the heart, your brain. I don't know. Mm. It's I never thought I would write a song. I remember being 14 I was like singing other people's songs like I would never write a song. I don't even know how people do it. And now we have over 100. Whoa. Yeah, we've got quite a few. And I was the opposite. I wanted to I wanted to write songs because I thought that the words were just like I was like, how do you piece this together? How do you make something like this? I remember walking around my grandpa's mill when I was five, wanting to write a song and I just didn't know how to and I was too afraid to. So I think what I would tell young ladies is uh, don't let fear or doubt hold you back. Yeah. So because that is a killer of dreams. <laughs> now do you guys work outside? Do you, do you work? A day job? Yes, I work for the Curry County Assessor's Office. I'm the cartographic technician and appraiser in that department. So so is that a full-time job? It is, yeah. I work four 10-hour days. So you have a full-time job, you have three kids, and you have the band. Mm -hmm. That is amazing, Yana and you. I am unfortunately a simple waitress. But I used to work. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I actually am. Um, I'm a woman of many trades. I used to have a sewing shop in Go Beach because I graduated from a technical school in Bulgaria, so I can fix clothes. But my shop was open for about four years, and then I closed it because I became pregnant with my first son. I see. So I'm still working the same job and, you know, gardening. I have a cat. I love her. She's amazing. Last oh, Sunday. shoot. And I brought the cat for the phobia. I'm sorry. That was just an example. Oh, gosh. No, I'm just... <laughs> she eats the spiders around the house. It's great. So how do you, does your day have more hours than 24? It feels like it sometimes. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, it gets it gets very difficult to try to fit everything in and then to try to find rest. Yeah. I find myself it, missing out on sleep a lot. And traveling. I mean, oh, you know, gosh, Gold Beach problem. is not the center of probably where you go. No, it's the capital of Rogue Strings. <laughs> yeah. So how often do you, how often do you perform in Gold Beach? We try not to very much. Yeah, yeah, because oh. it we don't want to play the same songs for the same people over and over and over again. I'd rather um, travel outside of our yeah. area and then come back like once every few months or something um, because I don't want people to get burnt out on our music. But we do have a show coming up on the 6th of July. Mm -hmm. Where's it at? At the Sea Star and Gold Beach. Sea Star Spirit House. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be back at Chetco on July 12th. 12th. Yeah. For the solo, you two, both of us spring, together, yeah. three hours. Mm -hmm. No, oh, that's what I was gonna say. I you had said three hours, and I said yes earlier on accident, yeah. but it's only two hours. It at was Checo. two hours. Yeah, it's oh. only two at Checo, but we do like at the Porta Pines. We played the three. Porta Pines was oh, it was Porta yeah. Pines, and you yeah. were three. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Oh, two hours. That's easy. Good. Yeah. That's, well, now <laughs> we see it like that. I say that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. Oh, it's only two hours. We'll wing it. <laughs> Ain't nothing. We have won it so many times. Yes. <laughs> Where do you see you guys in five slash ten years? <clears throat> that is a really good question um, that I can't answer today. 
Okay. I can't. I just want to get to our... Still on Earth, at least. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully. (laughs) Fingers crossed. Well, well, you're kind of already saying that, you know, you got got a lot of pokers in the fire here with uh, the merchandising and you're Mm -hmm. trying to talk to those producers. So it's like... You know, the crossroads start to see where you're going to go from here. Right. Hopefully nowhere but up. Right. That's that's the goal. Yeah. I'm dreaming about a big stage and lots of lights oh, and a full see? band. Where in in but not in Gold Beach. Everywhere. A full band. Oh, oh really? Yeah. So you're not just. Oh, I didn't realize that. I said I'm dreaming about it. Well, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, we definitely we um definitely you would like to. Because you guys are so unique. I mean, the two guitars oh, of sorry. Thank God. you. No, 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 you're fine. Good. Oh, uh. We definitely would like a full band. We'd like a drummer. I think uh, drums would add an element to the music that would be great for people. People want to get up and dance and yeah, um, stand the bass mm-hmm. player. Yeah, well, you you you're going to learn the bass, right? Mm-mm. Wait, who? I'm going to try. Like, who I'm going to try. Yeah, at least some simple stuff. I mean, that way we can kind of create our own bass lines, and then the, we could just show like if we have another player that wants to come along, we can I can we chart it out and we can have it for them so that it's ready. So it's not something that they're creating, something that we've already created. Yeah. It'll be something to keep your musical minions in line. Minions. <laughs> <laughs> well, then our minions will be grown up, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to shout out where you're going to perform... For the next few months, where how to get a hold of you? Um, I looked you up on Facebook. I'm now since for three days I'm on Facebook now. I don't know how to manage through that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> so I looked you up. There is a Rogue Springs a strings in there. So um, tell the audience where you're going to be in the next few months, so they can put it in their calendar and be there. Right yeah. on. We'll let you do that, Yana. Uh, we actually do have a Reverb Nation calendar set up, but um, I try to stay on top of those events. So July 6th is Gold Beach at the Sea Start Spirits House. July 12th is Chetco Brewing and Brook Kings. Yeah. Then we have August 3rd in Winchester Bay at the Blue Box Seafood Company venue. It's a great venue to go there. Then we have a minimal carnival in Port Holford, which you're going to attend there. It's a private land uh, annual event that happens once a year. Yes, but anybody can come. There's yep. uh, tickets at the music gate. All day. It's music all day long. There's face paintings for kids and um, Vendor. vendors. And you get to dress up because it's like a carnival yeah. atmosphere. And it is a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess the next event that we have, it's not for, it's private, so I'm not going to say where it is. Right. Um, but then we have one booked all the way in December at the moment <laughs> and a few others that we're trying to figure out dates for. So so how do people find out if they didn't write this down? Where would they find out your calendar? Was it Facebook? Um, we do put events on Facebook, but also our Reverb Nation account. So if you just go to Reverb Nation, you can look up Rogue Strings and it yeah. will have... Is um, it ReverbNation.com? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so. it's a musician-only kind of site. You can find a lot of musicians and indie artists and stuff. So okay. search, up, search up anybody pretty much. Okay. There's an info, a bio, picture, some oh, videos. Nice. Okay. So... Well, excellent. Um, and is there any website or anything else that where people can get a hold of you? No, we don't have a website set okay. up yet. So we're just All basically right. on Facebook and okay, Reverb Facebook Nation. and Reverb Nation. Mm-hmm. It is. So if I could ask you to play something, that would be super awesome. Thank you for volunteering to absolutely. Play something. Thanks, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, awesome. thank you so much. That's exciting. That's my first ever. <laughs> I'm a radio virgin. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Do you want us to talk about the song sure. before or after? Yeah. Nope. Oh, before, probably. Before. Okay. So this first song is uh, called Six Feet Under, and Yana came up with the idea. Um, it was more like, um, it's it's based on the things we want to leave behind. It's more like, a, you know, the mental things we can leave behind not the materialistic things and we're walking on the beach one day and they just like so what are we doing with this song are we murdering somebody and i said no it's more like what are we going to leave behind us i guess that's like a quote to me because i want our music to stay to to be to be heard yeah and to stay okay. behind us when we're gone wow cool well in all fairness when i asked that question it was because she goes she was saying 
I was like, and here's six feet under. And I was like, what? how are you going to find out that? What? <laughs> right. So I was like, ooh. Okay. Right. It wasn't, it's not that dark. It's okay. really not. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Yep. Dark. Rather yeah. cheerful, actually. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Not so dark. Nope. I'm out of the so dry. All right. <clears throat> Another song? I think we decided to play one of Lacey's oldie oldies. Oldie oldie? <laughs> yeah, it's called Trailer Park Living. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I wrote it when I was living in a trailer, trailer park. park. Imagine that. <laughs> Visiting with Megan. Yep. Yeah. So uh, this girl was a few spaces down from me and she was pretty shy and uh, kept to herself. And her and I were both walking to the little community laundry mat um, one day and we just started talking. And so we were bonding over laundry. And nice. so <laughs> so <laughs> kind of inspired by that. Ready? Three, four. I'd high hopes I'd be in Nashville by now All my big plans and be working out, no So here I sit on the outskirts of this town In a trailer park just waiting to get Trailer park living ain't as bad since you moved in. Boning out the laundry while we going where we've been. And people in town might look down, but they don't have a clue. There's more to me, and there's more to you. Yeah, yeah, there's more to me, and there's more to you. to keep your head held high when you're treated like dirt no one now there's rich enough to tell you what you're worth can't let the words of someone change your point of view an opinion don't make it the truth and trailer park living ain't as bad since you moved in bonding all the laundry where we go People in town might look down, but they don't have a clue. There's more to me, and there's more to you. Yeah, yeah, there's more to me, and there's more to you. We don't have a lot right now, but it's just enough. We ain't where we want to be, but we're never giving up. I can sit right here. And drink with you all night We could watch the sun come up And toast the days gone by So if you're thinking what I'm thinking We should grab a drink and sip our blues away Trailer park living ain't as bad since you moved in of a laundry where we going where we've been and people in town might look down but they don't have a clue there's more to me and there's more to you yeah yeah there's more to me and there's more to you yeah yeah there's more to me and there's more to you Very I think, fun. Thank ain't you. Not bad. <laughs> no. I want to live in a trailer park now. <laughs> it was actually was a lot so of good. fun. It was fun. It was a fun <laughs> time. Just walk around, meet all your neighbors. <laughs> Pretty fun. Yeah, you know them all. First name. Play bocce. They eventually get to, yeah. And their dogs. Or their cats. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> you have one more? Yeah, we do. We do. All the songs. And plus three more hours. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, what are we doing? Do you want to do? Do you want to do wrong way or do you want to do never let you down? Which one do you want? Never let you down. Okay. Okay. Let's do. Lacey that. has voted. Alrighty. That song it's based on a uh, past love or something. I mean, I it was inspired. I spent four days trying to write that uh, riff on the guitar. <laughs> in my kitchen while stirring my soup or something, I remember just having the guitar and just learning this riff thingy. Cute. If you ask me what key is it, I won't tell you, but I know how to play it now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll learn that next. Okay. This this song is on our Spotify account. Um, uh -huh, Spotify. Yeah, we have some songs on Spotify. We did a live recording a few years ago and yep. we have five there. Yep. Ready? Yep. Two, three, four. Gazing through the stars. 
star full skies still remember those brown eyes dark emotions brew perfect storms needing you to knock on my door now Again, I miss you. I miss you. Come back, sweep me off my feet. Stare in my eyes just like. Did before. Let's break out of this prison life. Can we just drive away now? Now I would never let you down. Take my hands, let's spin around this old house and forget all the pain we've been through. Wish you were mine. Once again, I miss you. I miss you. Your shadow is chasing me. Some days it's hard. pain we've been through wish you were mine once again once again I would never let you down take my hands let's spin around this old house and forget all the pain we've been through wish you were mine once again once again Again, I miss you. I miss you. Wish you were mine once again. Oh, that was the end. I was yeah. listening for the last word. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. Wow. So, you guys have listened to. The show with Yana and Lacey with Rogue Strings, beautiful songs. They're all homemade, homebrewed, self-performed. Look them up, Spotify, <laughs> YouTube, or anywhere. Rev, rev, Reverb. Reverb. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so I think we are, we cannot do our quotes. We already got one quotes. All the jokes, I'm banned from joke Joking anyway, right? That seems to be the rule. <laughs> um, so we're just going to finish it up. So the time flew with these beautiful people here. And we're done with this week's live radio show. You have been listening to Jacques and Doc, or Doc and Jacques, on KCIW. LP 100.7 FM in beautiful Brookings, Oregon. We hope that you have enjoyed the show. Lucas and I certainly have learned a lot about Rogue Strings and enjoyed their songs. We want to thank Tom Bozak and Gary for the engineering wizardry in the KCIW studio. Lastly, if you are or know a fascinating local character, please let us know. Goodbye. <laughs>